Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be. The world awaits to receive you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know I was going to pop on the screen with that face. Welcome, welcome, Uncensored and Enlightenment Talk family. And you're here with your host, Grace Levi. And yes, 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 you're here with Miss Sassy, Graceful, Beautiful, and Spicy. And we're going to have- So now we're going to move on into some more domestic violence domestic violence okay i don't understand why these people practice domestic violence but rapper uh playboy cardi arrested in georgia for domestic violence this is ridiculous this is what reports say fulton county uh georgia atlanta rapper playboy cardi has been reported arrested in georgia after allegedly choking his baby mother pregnant his well his pregnant girlfriend until and are during an argument about a fraternity test uh walk away girl walk away if you gotta do all of this and you maybe didn't even come from experience it's not worth it if just gonna let you know it's not worth it. TMZ re reports that the arrest affidavit showed that the victim told Filter County Police that Cardi, who real name is Jordan Carter, grabbed her throat and held her until she couldn't barely breathe on December 20th. The woman reportedly told police that she was 14 weeks pregnant at the time and thought she was going to die. According to TMZ report, the woman claims the incident began when she tried to talk to Carter about the baby, which led to an argument over the fraternity test that escalated into a alleged physical attack. The woman says she was able to get away thanks to witness, but she says he tried to pull her out of the car and stop her from using the vehicle SOS feature to report the attack to the police. Jordan Carter. TMZ said police wrote in the affidavits report that women, that the woman had visible injuries on her neck, chest, and back. Iggy Azalea indirectly tweet about the incident. Imagine having a pregnant girlfriend and pretending that they don't exist until it comes out you like and abuse them too and rarely visit your actual son unless it's because you're running from whatever problems y'all got going on in Atlanta. The press, the press with your serial abuse of women. The tweet reads: So, uh, Iggy has something to say. Uh, yeah, because people are feeling sweet. I know she is. You, she will be. You get a baby. You know, you better speak, my. I saw that, and I was like, what the f? Of course, he isn't that. He isn't. They let this man get away and do anything it's embarrassing imagine having a kid by a dude like that that's wow there's plenty of women who have uh kids by people like that i was reading the actual comments and there's a lot i have two kids by a dude like that literally he's a whole bum this dude will literally not take care of his kids and then when he get in trouble, he gonna come go hide at the baby mama house because that was that's the one that's gonna help him out of the trouble, give him some money or protect him because he think that they ain't gonna come and check him. Now I've been there, done that, and baby, his baby mama's better take a whole glass and walk the hell away really, really fast because it's really not worth it. It is really not worth it. Okay. So we're going to get off a little bit of this star news and we're going to continue into some Atlanta news because I know I'm from Atlanta and it be going down out here in Atlanta. Huh, <sighs> we got a Bonnie and Clyde. We got a Bonnie and Clyde couple. We got a Bonnie and Clyde couple who want to dish and dash their damn food 
and start shooting up the place. Yes, yes, yes. Atlanta News. Okay, so if you're from Atlanta and you know I'm out here in Atlanta, I'm going to be reporting on Atlanta News too. Okay, so if y'all can see this on the screen, let me just make sure. This is ridiculous. Couple shoot security guard after they caught Dinah and Dasher. Straight ratchet. Ratchet. They, oh my God, scavengers. I'm just going to tell you, don't be mad. Don't be mad, Atlanta. But all I know that there's a lot of scavengers here to do shit like this, okay? If you caught, you caught. Then you're going to shoot the man? Okay. A security guard was shot while trying to stop a couple whom deny a dad, deny and dash at the Atlanta restaurant authorities in Georgia say. The shooting happened around 11 p.m. Saturday, February 11th. I told you it was a lot going on this weekend. That's why I'm here doing another live. It was just ridiculous when a couple left the sage would fire Trevin and Dunwilly without paying for their food, according to the city police department. The security guard, who was not named, confronted the couple in the parking lot where a scuffle ensured. Police said at some point, the male patron fired his gun and shot the security guard in the arm and shoulder. Thank God it was just the arm and shoulder. Jesus, protect this man. People are crazy. The couple ran away. They ran away after the shooting. No arrest has been made as Monday, February the 13th. They ran? Oh, how you run away in Georgia? Georgia got some long ass streets. I won't be running. You'll be tired as hell. You had to go in the damn bushes. They probably got in the car. Baby, people in Georgia are lazy too. I know they ain't running down the street. I, when the last time you saw somebody running down to Georgia? The security guard was taken to the hospital in stable condition, police said. Additional details about the incident were immediately available and were immediately available. And authorities say they're still investigating. Dunwoody is about 15 minutes away, northeast of downtown Atlanta. Okay, so shout out to bottom of the barrel Dunwoody. Shut up. I'm not saying that. Dunwoody is not that bad, actually. It's just the people out here in Atlanta, and and it's not only the, the people that come to Georgia, and I'm part of them. They didn't came to start some trouble. They didn't came with some gangs and all types of stuff. I ain't saying that. But that ain't true. But what I will say is that the people who here in Atlanta, who was born here and raised here, straight scavengers, said, tell them I said it, on some scavenger, literally boy be sleeping with your man coming to your house every day babysitting your kids didn't even know her kid was your uh kid brother or sister that's Atlanta yeah yeah so we got another Atlanta update and this is about a missing 16 year old young lady who now has made an arrest in connection to the 16 old late a 16 year old girl um being missing and I'm going to tell y'all a story because y'all know I always got a story, okay? So let's read this first and then I'm going to tell you my story. Georgia police officer arrested in connection with death of 16-year-old girl who was missing for six months, authorities said. And this is brought to you by CNN News. Look at this beautiful young lady. This is ridiculous. Susanna remains were found last week after she was reported missing in July by police. And <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Sorry. An Atlanta police officer has been fired and arrested on suspicion of concealing the death of a 16-year-old girl who remains were found last week, some six months after her family last saw her. Authority said, Miles Bryant, a 22-year-old Doraville, Georgia police officer, was arrested on. Preliminary charges of false reporting a crime and concealing the death of another in connection with a de the death of Susan Morales, the Gwinnett County Police Department says in the news release Monday. Okay. Oh, my God. This is just ridiculous. Brian was employed as a police officer in Dunwoody, an Atlanta suburb and DeKalb County city that neighbors Gwinnett County. Okay. Brian was being held Monday in county jail without opportunity for bond. Gwinnett County Police said details about what persists 
he is precisely, I do apologize, precisely he is accused of doing and what led investigation to him weren't immediately available. Brian was fired on doors, from Doorsville Police Department Monday after officers were made aware of the charges against him. A city official said he was with the department for nearly two years, having started in May 2021. CNN was unable to determine whether Brian has an attorney. The remainder Morales and residents of Norcross, a city some 20 miles northwest of Atlanta, were found February 6th near Highway in East Burnett County. After a passerby report seeing what looked like a human remains in the woods. Ugh. Investigators still are trying to determine a team manner of cause of death in the Gwinnett police release said. Morales has been missing since July 26, 2022, when she texted her mother that she was walking home from a nearby friend's house. She never made it home, according to police. The teen cell phone and video footage show Morales walking towards her home that night, police said. Cited in the part, a local application, investigators believe she may have gotten into a vehicle, Gwinnett County Police said in late January. So this is a picture of the guy, and I wish I could see him. This is ridiculous. And... Look, look at her. Look at her. All right. This is ridiculous because we do have to be aware of what's going on around us because you never know. And just because people are in prominent position does not mean that they are not capable of doing the unthinkable. We don't know what this officer's connection is, but it is a good connection for him to be fired immediately and they're not saying what he's charged with. So I do pray for this young lady's family because at the end of the day, for your child just to go to a friend house and not make it home, it is very, very tragic. So this is another Atlanta update from the 16 year old girl who was missing in July. They have found, located her and now a Atlanta police is under investigation, has been fired allegedly for connection. So we ain't saying he did it, but he may have been covering up something. So I got a story. You want to hear it? Here it go. So a couple of years ago, I happened to be in court. Y'all like, damn, why the hell she always in court? Well, I was fighting a traffic ticket and I almost got held in contempt in court because the chick hated me and she didn't like what I was saying. Make a long story short, probably like a week or two later, I ran into this officer and the officer was like, hey, you look familiar. I was like, yeah, you was the one that was going to hold me in contempt. You about to lock me up. Had me back there behind the bars while my daughter was in the court looking cry. It was that bad. I got stories. Anyway, make a long story short, I say, I forgive you. He was like, oh, you know, I was just doing my job. That judge, she just, you know, you got to follow. You can't ask that question. I said, yeah, you can't be free to talk. You can't be free to talk. And that's why she almost locked me up. But I wanted to ask you a question, officer. Now, it was this Caucasian man that happened to come get in contact with me because I've been making videos on YouTube way before this. I've been censored way before this. So on my other channel, I was making videos pertaining to law, my court cases, things I was talking about, corny things that y'all wouldn't like. And I also always made updates about sex trafficking, being aware of the summer solstice, what happens in the beginning of September, what happens at um, just before the new year, how it be, you know, these springs of herders, mysterious celebrities passing, those type of things. So it prompted this gentleman to inbox me and basically start telling me about what was going on in my local area. Okay. And this is why I'm telling you because it's so weird. Okay. So basically he was saying, I like what you're doing because there's not a lot of people of your color. This is a white man, 
white man because I'm cool with everybody, but I'm going to speak my piece. He was like, that's actually literally trying to communicate to the black community what's going on as far as the ex trafficking, being aware, protecting your kids, you know, educating your own self, these type of things. And he said, it's very, very important for you to get this out to your people. And when he said that to me, I didn't even take offense. I didn't take offense because he was like, because they're not paying attention. And I'm like, I understand. I, you know, as much respect. We all on different learning um, levels. We all see things different. That's why I bring commentary different ways so we can all connect, figure this out together. He said, well, basically in your area, I have been trying to bring evidence to the prosecutor's office, his slew of evidence that allegedly that there are officers in people of the law and people's at a court that has been involved in ex trafficking in my area in Atlanta. I'm in Georgia. I'm in Georgia. I'm just telling you the truth. Okay. And that the prosecutors in my area, in my town, will not listen to anything he has to say. This was about four years ago. This was almost two years before the pandemic because I was on the Black Discovery channel, that channel that they took down, but I got all the recordings gotcha anyway so i was like listen how do you know this is true and he was like well i have the evidence i have people who have been involved in this that and the third so when he told me all this i had this in the back of my mind when i was talking to the officer so let's get back to the officer so i said hey sir um I heard of some funny things going on around he's like funny things like what i said first and foremost do you attend the council meetings and things that happens here because I've seen a gentleman who went to the council meeting because he showed a video. His name was his name was Carl Thompson. He showed a video of him basically at the council meeting in my town trying to tell him about the sex trafficking and the police that was allegedly involved. And they was literally trying to get him banned and escorted out saying it's not the time to talk about that. It's not the time to talk about that. Literally concerns about the police department. So I, when I talked to the gentleman, I didn't bring it to him to that attention. But I said, do y'all, in that, you know, aspects, because he's going to be like, what you trying to call me? So I was like, listen, do the police officers or did you ever come and encounter with the high, you know, like, or anything that has to do with, like, sex trafficking, that type of stuff? He was like, yeah, all the time. Now, mind you, I live in a town. I don't live in Atlanta. I live outside of Atlanta. So when I moved here, it wasn't even like the way it is now. So basically... He was like, yeah. He was like, it was this one young lady. We arrested her for prostitution, And she was so hot out of her brain that she didn't know her name. She didn't know where she was from. And they literally had to find her on Facebook. So they went through Facebook, found her as a missing person, come to find out she was from another state. Coming, been, She'd been brought into Atlanta and ex trafficked and drugged up. Okay. Now I know I told you that story and that cop may have not been involved, but I'm telling you the story to say that it's real, that these things are real and we cannot discredit it. You have to be aware of everyone around you. I don't care if they're police officers, if they're your uncles, they're your mamas, they're your sisters, your brothers. We have some people that's mentally off in their heads, especially when they're blinded about starter to or even position to because you don't even have to be a star you don't have to be a star for people to idolize you you have uncles in our family you have neighbors who people idolize oh they would never oh he's amazing and this person has three people in the basement you remember when the black lady kept trying to tell the person like something ain't right he's a killer he's a killer and nobody will listen to the lady and he was literally a murderer so we have to pay attention to those things. Please teach your daughter um, about signs of people trying to lure them this, uh, lure them places, about men love bombing them. Because we have this culture where girls, oh, you got want to be taken care of and you got to buy me this and he got to be making twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a day. Baby, that lifestyle come with something. What y'all seeing on TV is not all what it's cracked up to be. And the girls will not tell you until it's too late. I.e., an example. <clears throat> Let's 
I don't know the young lady name, but maybe I'll bring it up and see how she's doing if she's still alive. The young lady who was uh, not a video vixen, but she was trying to make it in the industry. And I think Tasha K did a video on her and she had full blown HIV or ACE. You know what I'm saying? And she didn't figure this out until she was about 80 pounds. How do you don't figure out that you have a, a, a diagnosis like this until you're 80 pounds? That tells you how much, how less educated our youth is, how much they don't take care of their body. They don't get checked up. And guess who fault is that? Guess who fault is that? That's our fault as parents as well. I know we got some hard-headed ass kids, teenagers and things like that, but baby, when you're the breadwinner and you have been born them since a child with morals, values, integrity, and they, and they do as you do, because do kids do as you do. So these kids ain't corrupted because they just fucking corrupted. It's because they see what the hell is going on around them what you subject them to. So us as the black community got to take responsibility. I know I got a little serious on that commentary. That's the, but I got to, because that right there is serious. And I think people use their position as a way to take advantage, as a way to take advantage. All right. So we're going to continue with some more celebrity news, but not right at this second. I also got that video of Jay Prince's daughter. We're going to talk about Jay Prince's daughter and talk about domestic violence. Oh, I didn't put that in the title. Y'all ain't know that I had that video too. But before we get into that, we're going to get into one more article that is actually from Atlanta. And this article is Councilman Pushes for Ride Share Protection After Daughter is Gunned Down in Uber. OK, there's been some things going on in Uber and Lyft. And I, I think the black community needs to be aware of that, too, because there has been undercover a high string of rapes, of rapes connected to Uber. And you know who Uber connected to, even though he just the face of it. Jay-Z, Jay-Z. I'm just playing. I'm not playing, but I'm telling you the truth. But with not saying that he got connection to the people who are doing stuff, but you know, I gotta just throw some conspiracy shit in there so y'all can listen. But anyway, let's get to what's going on with this council member and his daughter. And this happened at Peachtree Corner Councilman. This is Peachtree Corner Councilman Joe Sawyer says his daughter Carr was shot 18 times, November 24th. The suspect was killed in the shooting with the DeKalb police. Let's listen. Are you skeptical of head? See if they go um, after this commercial. We got 27 seconds. I want to make sure that y'all can hear it too. So I'm going to take it off the screen and I'm going to put it right back on because I want y'all, y'all know how I move. I move a little fast. All right, commercial. Let's skip. One of the most popular side hustles in town can be dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous out there. And tonight, a Metro Atlanta councilman says that Cher. Rideshare drivers need to have the right to carry a gun to protect themselves. Joe Sayers' daughter, Lauren, was gunned down in November while driving a lift in DeKalb County. And tonight, a proposal is in the works that would allow Uber and Lyft drivers to carry a gun. 11 Alive's Cody Alcorn is here with the details. Jennifer, Ron, both Lyft and Uber, they don't allow drivers to carry a weapon, but Peachtree Corners... Councilman Joe Sawyer says times have changed in Georgia and so should the rideshare company's weapon policy. Mm -hmm. November 21st, my daughter was tragically murdered. Lauren Allen, a mother of three, was simply doing her job. You never know who you're going to have in the back seat. Lauren was dropping off a woman who, unbeknownst to her, was in a domestic dispute with the suspect. That guy shot her car 18 times. <laughs> Lauren wow. didn't survive. It, it's very hard. It's very hard because we we look for her to drive down the street at any moment. Instead, they have to come here. A reminder as to that fateful night. We're going to do something for her in her honor. Lauren's dad, who's also a Peachtree councilman, is pushing for change in Georgia. I look at my daughter's incident and they need to be able to protect themselves. Somebody's got to fight for these drivers. In 2019, former state representative Scott Turner, who was also an Uber driver, sponsored a bill. It would have allowed Uber and Lyft drivers who have a concealed weapons permit to carry a gun. 
The bill never made it to the floor. Hey, this is 2023. I mean, it's a state law. You don't you don't need a permit to carry Thank a gun you. now. That's what That's I was saying. Councilman Sawyer says Uber and Lyft drivers can't continue to be sitting ducks. It, at least it gives them a chance. And people, these robbers, they don't care. They're going to they gonna shoot somebody. All right. Yeah, that is so crazy because I, we were just talking about that where literally the gun laws change in about 21 states in the United States where everybody can carry a gun without a permit. And that includes Georgia. So I don't understand why Lyft and Uber will have that policy when literally people can just walk around with a gun. And also, this is a castle state, meaning like you can protect yourself even before this gun law change in Georgia. Before I had my gun license, I still was able to have a gun in my home and also have a gun in my car. And we can use it if anyone comes into our domain as protection. So this is wrong on so many levels. But I'm just like, what happened that she her car got shot up so many times? Like that is just totally ridiculous and it's not acceptable but two i got another story come on y'all ready to listen to this i got another story all right now this is something about a patient actually now when i was uh one of these contracts it was like last year it was a young man that came in he was out here in atlanta and allegedly he this listen to this y'all it gets serious so you just gotta just be aware you never know because especially in these states where now they're driving around with just guns and anybody over 18 and people literally ain't there so what ended up happening to this young man allegedly he said that he was coming from going out or coming from work he was driving down the highway he said that gunfire went off while he was driving and he just lost control of his car and went into the ditch. And this half the story. I'm the nurse. I was just getting some of the story. So he said that um, when he went into the ditch, he hit his head. Now, he didn't get shot at that time. But I was like, what happened? What made them shoot? Like, why was they shooting? And come to find out, allegedly, as per the mother when she finished the story and told me that they were shooting on the highway. Now, this ain't the first time where you're hearing this run to drivers chasing people down. This happened a few times in Georgia. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with people's head. That's why I just fall back. I'm like, if you got to go, you got to go. Listen, I'm a fucking millionaire. <laughs> in my head, I'm a millionaire. I ain't got to go nowhere that fast. And if I'm going to be late, baby, I'll be there unless I'm in labor. So with that goes to say, he said that allegedly that it was shooting on a highway. The bullets shot the car. I don't know if it made him. I don't know what how it made him crash. It was him and another lady. So when he ended up coming to the hospital, guess what he was coming to the hospital for? Seizures. We couldn't figure out why this young man was having seizures. Literally, he started having seizures seven days later because he had a concussion. CTE, what is it? CTE, that concussion. When we talk about that, remember this topic that we talk about. So he was blacking out. He didn't remember what ended up happening. He bu had bust a seizure, fell into the glass. He said, I guess his mama like me. He she don't like mess and she don't play that shit. He said he just got up and he saw that the glass was broken. He was like, oh snap. Like he didn't know that what happened. So he just started cleaning up the glass. And his brother came in after he heard her dad and was like, what went on? And that was the first seizure. And then like 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, he had another seizure walking down the hallway because literally he had a concussion that was escalating. Only took care of him for that one shift. He came in probably three o'clock in the morning. And that's all I could tell you. But all I know that it was related to random gunfire on the highway, fucking road rage, people not having discernment and everybody having access to guns right now. Okay. And I just taught you about possible CTE and concussion signs and symptoms. Okay. Yeah. So I want to say rest in peace to this councilman's daughter because things be going down in the A. I literally came from Newark, New Jersey, like, yo, this thing now follow me. The hood none follow my ass. I can't get away from it. Okay. 
So I, I do got more local news for you, but before we get into the local news, let's move on because I know I, I be sharing a lot of no, local news and I'm sharing celebrity news. Let's get into a little something today. We have fans that are concerned. They are concerned about my favorite singers. Y'all know we're not 80s babies, so who we love? Casey, Jodeci, Devante, you know how it was. Ooh, this way, especially Joe, uh, uh, KC, his ass, he just keep on. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, lift up his shirt, lift up his shirt. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, shit, y'all know I ain't got no behavior. Oh, man. So, listen, I thank you for the comments, y'all. Y'all know I'm learning how to broadcast and read the comments, so I appreciate you guys and the thumbs up. I'll be here. So, moving forward, look at this. shit. Excuse my language on a Wednesday. KC Jodeci. Now, what happened to my baby? Something happened to JoJo. Now, I can't make no diagnosis, but all I know, he got a lot of abdominal girth. And he telling me he may got some heart issues. I ain't saying it got nothing to do with this. But all I know is that my baby not doing well. So let's listen to him sing. <laughs> Okay, I can't play all. Uh, I can't play because I know I'm gonna get copyright. But first and all, foremost, KC still got it. His old old ass coming up there. He was one of them old drunk men at the liquor store talking about. And this time, cool with me goodbye. Yeah, y'all know it. I got it. I got it. JoJo, on the other hand, he coming up there. I'm not cracking jokes, but I'm I'm had to crack some jokes. Jo the JoJo, they should have not did that. They should have not put him on the stage. Look at my man face. I'm gonna mute it. You gonna see? Can I mute this? Can I mute it? I want to mute it because I want y'all. To watch JoJo get off the stage. Look, I mean, well, look at his face. Oh, match. Okay. Damn it. How can I mute this? I can't mute it right this second. But you see JoJo face? JoJo like, damn, man. I knew I shouldn't have came out here. This is some bullshit. Man, they... He like, yo, he told him I can't do this. I think he told him like this... I can't do this like in, in Casey. You got to. You got to, man. You got to come out for the family. And look at him. He like, y'all saw that face. Y'all saw that face, yo. Y'all saw that face. My man was a little disappointed. So fans are concerned about JoJo, which they should be. He is getting older in age. But my man didn't even look like he wanted to be there. He like, man, I'm just here for the check. Like, you really try to make me come here for the check when you could have just did this. It put me on a teleprompter or something like that. So that's what I'm reading from this. Shout out to my favorite Casey and JoJo. Casey, JoJo, Devante. I got to do all the body thing. <laughs> yeah, know. Y'all know how they used to get down. Mm -hmm. Yup, yup, yup. All right. <laughs> Y'all know I got no behavior. Today, Wednesday, we about 45 minutes in now. What I want to do is, before I get to J. Prince's daughter and her abuse, alleged abuse, and psychological breakdown, we got to, got to give you a word from my sponsor. I love you. Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step by step, guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team. Answer, because you are that, you are capable. 
You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be. The world awaits to receive you.